my name is Kevin Shalmai. In the meteorology department of the Bureau of Standards, and welcome to our, our presentation on metrology. And incidentally, today's um, World Metrology Day. Uh, we'll be speaking later in the presentation about that. And the theme for this year's World Metrology Day is uh, Metrology for International Trade. If I may continue. <coughs> So today we'll be covering the following areas. We'll be looking at the history of measurements, the metric system, the rules for writing SI units, the importance of measurement, types of metrology, the department within the SFBS and benefits of metrology. And of the presentation, you would be able to um, have a greater appreciation for the importance of correct measurements and, and its impact on our daily lives. Mm -hmm. Also, we'll be looking at some basic terms and definitions used in metrology, um, the link between the proper application of metrology and measurement practices. <coughs> We can safely say that measurements are behind the words of um, Lord Kelvin, to measure is to move. What do we measure? Uh, in terms of safety, for instance, in the home, in the workplace, good. how do we know that our tire pressure our, our tires is, um, are inflated correctly. Um, how do we know that we are keeping within the, um, the speed the, the, the speed limit, even in the home, for instance? And you know, and you know, um, if if these measurements are incorrect, if if it's not done properly, then we ha we have we have a safety issue. In the homes, for instance, uh, if you look at the microwave, that's an example. Um, mm -hmm. How would you know that when the microwave is in operation that the amount of radiation given off is, 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 is within um, safe, safe limits? Again, for health, um, you know, whatever medication that you prescribe would rely on, on reliable and, and precise measurements. Um, if you're given the, the if if you're given the wrong medication because um, of instruments are not working properly, then of course. That's what do we measure? Basically, it will be the same: pressure, temperature, radiation intensity, etc. Uh, in trade, well, no trade will be possible without 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 proper measurements. And again, we measure the same: weight, mass, volume, in different quantities, different. Yeah, different right. for environmental monitoring. Um, how do we know which month is the is the is the is the hottest month of the year? You know, all that has to do with measurements, and of course that would allow us to 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 monitor and make projections. And again, the same thing we measure: temperature, humidity, volume, etc. For industrial development would involve basically the same weight, volume, pressure, etc. So one factor will not be possible without without measurements. And again, for scientific advances, would involve reliable and accurate measurements. So for Basically, all these activities, it will be measuring basically the same, the weight, volume, pressure, concentration, length, width, etc. So we can safely say that our economy is based on, on measurements from what we produce locally for consumption, 
to what we export and even what we import. Let's look briefly at the history of measurement. Um, but incidentally, well, this session has been recorded, so I suppose it can be made available to, to um, the other fans when they went here. You would probably think that issues of weights and measures um, you know, existed only now, but it has been around for, for a while. As you can see from from the screen, and how did the men in the in, in the ancient societies measure? They used what was available to them: their body parts, you know, the, the earth, whatever was, whatever they could have used. And of course, if you look at the example of the foot, that's actually the length of somebody's feet. Um, the cubit, that's the length of the of the you know, the span of the arm, basically. Well, from the fingertips to the to the elbow. Um, in measurements were given even in times of the Bible, the the, the arc, the dimensions were given in in, in, cubi, in, in feet in, in cubit. Sorry. For volume, they use seeds. Because these seeds had, they were consistent in size and width, so it was appropriate for them to use. For mass, again. They use stones and seeds as standards. It was said that when the first British pound was introduced, or when the when it, when the pound was introduced for the first time, it was a weight of seven thousand grains of wheat. That was the definition of, of, of the British pound. For time, we have the sundial, the hour clock. Of course, again making use of what was available. You know, the sun and the, the shadow it would cast on, on, on objects, etc. Now we have our, um, you know, clocks, etc., watches, atomic clocks that would be, um, well, the advancement that has, that has been made. So let's look at the metric system. We would need to appreciate that, um, to understand that each society, well, different cultures developed their own measurement system. The Egyptians had the had theirs, the Romans, the French. Um, but the problem is that as society became more developed and trade extended across borders, it became necessary to, to, to have that, to have a system that was suited for trade and research. So what, what do you have? The, 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 the French came up with what was called the, the metric system. Um, it was a, a worldwide coordinated measurement system that after some years it was realized that it, 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 it was suited for, 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 for trade and for scientific research. So many decades later at the Geneva Convention, it was agreed that all countries of the world would go, would go metric. Um, that um, convention became known as the, the Treaty of the Meter and it was signed by 17 countries. The International Bureau of Weights and Measures was, was set up at that time, and that was the, the organization that was charged with um, looking after weights and measures issues on a, on a, on a, on a, global, on a global scale. Um, and also, the 20th of May, the 20th of May, um, 1875 started what became known as World Metrology Day, and the website is there. You can um, always go on the website to see to, to, to learn more about World Metrology Day. Um, many decades later, the these units were there was a revision made, and these units became known as the International System of, of Units. 
and you have these units, the base units, the length, mass, time, etc. Some of which might not be, um, you may not use. And then you have the derived units, like the square meter and the cubic meter. Um, so these are the base units. One of the the, the mandate of the of the of, of the um, French Academy of Sciences when they were mandated to develop that metric system was that the was that the um, the units had to be related to each other in one way or another. Just to give an example, for instance, you have if you have one length multiplied by another length, then you have an area, and then of course, if you multiply that by the foot length, you have volume. All right, that's just an example. So you have 10, I get an example, 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters, you have a thousand cubic centimeters. So that's one way the units are related to each other. And if you look at the definition of a meter, all right, that thousand cubic centimeters is equivalent to one meter. So what are the advantages of the metric system? Uh, well, first, it is a less confusing system. It avoids uh, multiple units to express volume, for instance, so teaspoons, fluid ounces, etc. Uh, that can be somewhat confusing. With the metric system, you have there's the liters and the submultiples. Also avoid the use of dual terms so that ounces to, to measure both width and volume. And these are um, errors that people would commonly make. For instance, if you look on, on, the, on the right of, this, of the screen, you have 120 milliliters. That suggests that there's a, a liquid in there. But the four ounces, would, would, but, but that would be a unit of, of, of mass. So um, a distinction would have, would have to be made. And sometimes if it's not made, then it can be can cause confusion. Again, looking at the advantages of the metrics, it's an easier system to use. It's, it's a decimal system based on multiples of, of 10. So with length, you have the base unit being the meter and you have a the multiple power of 10, the kilometer or submultiple, the, the centimeter. The same for weight, you have the kilogram and the submultiples being grams, milligrams, etc. And volume, it will be the same. So it simplifies everything. The, again, confusion that can be caused with the, imperial, with the imperial units. The US gallon, for instance, is smaller than the UK gallon. And then the US quart is smaller than the UK quart. But in the U.S. fluid ounce is, is, is larger or bigger than the, than the U.K. fluid ounce. Okay, so that's, that's the issue that can, that can arise. The metric sim the system, everything simplified. So that whole drive some, see, 40 years ago, by when a metrication committee was set up, was to... To, to see that the, the island St. Lucia converts um, to the metric system. At that time, um, in the metric system was introduced into the school's curriculum, but the private sector to, to, to use imperial. Um, so some 30, 40 years later, a couple of years ago, an education board was set up. And of course, they continued the process where a number of sectors were able to, to make that conversion from imperial to metric. So the supermarkets now sell the, the, the produce and the product in, in, uh, in, in, in metric, the, the gas stations, et cetera, selling liters. And other sectors have along the way um, metricated. What are some of the rules for writing SI, the SI units? If I may just read, the unit symbols are printed in Roman upright type. Okay, they, are, they are printed in lowercase unless they are derived from a proper noun. And if you look at the example from Pascal, uh, it is Blaise Pascal. Um, of course, that's a proper noun, so it would be in capital P. 
the exception would be for the liter. It can be written in both upper and lower case L as a unit. Unit symbols are mathem mathematical entities are not abbreviations. Therefore, they are not to be followed by a period except at the end of a sentence. So if you look at the example, um, you cannot write 75 centimeters and a full stop if it's not if it, if that's not the end of the sentence and also you cannot pluralize the, the units so 75 centimeters would be 75 cm and not cm or 50 kilograms would be 50 kg and not 50 kgs again for the science students they will be familiar with that um, the informing products and quotients of Unit symbols, the, the, the normal rules for algebraic multiplication and division apply. So, multiplication has been indicated by a space or a half high centered dot. Um, of course, and you can see the example in red, the Newton meter is the NM or the dot in between. So, there's a multiplication. And likewise, for division, it can either be the, the slash or the, the negative um, exponent. I'm sure the students will be familiar with that. We may continue. There must not be, be any abbreviation. For seconds, for second, for seconds we have to yeah, is the, either the S or the word second. And for square millimeter, either the the M M squared or the so we cannot have these abbreviations. For cubic centimeters, it's a term that we would it would the correct form would be the cm cube or the cube or the word cubic centimeters. But I know the CCs it has to be with, has to do with cubic capacity, especially for I think the, the engine capacity. That's a term that is used, but it's a non SI abbreviation. If you want to, if you want to say. But the correct form would be the cm cube or cubic centimeters. Um, and again, for meters per second, we can't have that. We have seen that around. We have even seen it on our road signs, where that's supposed to be 20 miles per hour, but it's, it's even, well, it's written incorrectly. That has since been corrected. But that's the confusion that can. Some of the rules, you just have to learn them the same way we learn the, the, the letters of the alphabet. If we may continue again briefly, there mustn't be any space between the the, the unit and the and the prefix. So milligram would be one word and not as is written. There must be no space left between the last digits and the and the symbol of the unit. And that's something we do if we're not careful. It can happen. So ten meters it would be the space and not um, Yeah, the space has to be left. The same thing for weight. Five grams and not as is seen there. What are the importance of measurement? What is a measurement? A measurement is basically a comparison. If I read, it's an unknown quantity being expressed in terms that, that are clear, definite, and useful. So you express the unknown, which is what you do not know, with something that is that is known. So if you if you need the the, the length of, of say a piece of material, that's the unknown. But your known would be um, the, the ruler or the the measurements on the on the ruler or, or your tip. And of course, you would express one in terms of the other. So how do we measure? We know how the, for instance, the men in the primitive society used to measure um, using their whatever the, whatever was um, their, their body parts um, the sun etc we can measure by by guessing you know we can know how long it takes you know given a, a tolerance of course to get from one part of the island to the next you know actually perform do the measurement they are also chemical and electronic means of, of doing measurement if you want to know the, the amount of of, of chemical in a substance, you know, the chemical ways of doing that. Uh, 
I do we measure? It could be that our customers require that we that we make that measurement. They, they, they have their own specifications. Um, for certain processes in manufacturing, it could be an internal requirement that you, that you go, for instance, say in a in a bottle of salt drink, you know, the, the level of, of, of bricks, you know, or pressure is in there. So it could be a requirement for your internal processes. When we do the gas stations every every um, six months or twice a year, um, it's a it's a legal requirement. So we, we again measuring instruments used for trade has to be has to be um, verified according to our metrology at at least at least twice a year or once a year. So so we it's a legal requirement. So there are different reasons why we. Let's look at measurements and at the basis for decision making. If we have any decision to make, we would need to be informed. So at least we can we can inform decision. And of course, um, the better information we get, the more information we get, the better or the, the better will be decision. And how do we get that information? We need to measure. We need to measure. Lord Kelvin said to measure is to move. Of course, if we do not measure properly, we cannot make a, a proper, we do not have the proper information, we will not be able to make that informed decision. And of course, if we make a, a bad decision, that can have consequences. We work and other costs associated, etc. So what's the bad news? Measurements are not perfect. And why are they not perfect? Because there are factors that affect them, for instance, you, know, you have machine error, human error, the method that we use cannot be good. Uh, variations in, in, in temperature, etc. Just an example and illustration at the site. Green platform and your and your object that can cause uh, Formation of convection currents that can affect um, your weighing, your, weighing, your, your results. And of course, you probably might not even know what exactly you, you need to measure, or it might just be a mistake. A mistake. You can make a mistake in measurement. So, metrology in the science of measurement takes care of, of that to make sure that if it's applied properly, then they can be. You can be assured that your result will be reliable and precise. And that's what metrology deals with. The units, the way, the procedures that is used, and we need to know about measurement practices, etc., etc., etc. So we can say metrology is our guarantee for correct and reliable measurement, especially for picking or making proper decisions. So say we have to measure the diameter of the beast, right? We will have to ask ourselves, what, what's, what do we need that measurement for? If it's just to probably um, get the dimensions to make a box to contain the disc, it might not be that, you know, big of a deal. But if it's for some more How are we going to take that measurement and what units to use and what equipment and whether the equipment is calibrated, etc. etc. Um, if I may just give an example, um, of, uh, at the way bridge that the Bureau at one time calibrated, and at the end of the exercise, it was found out that the, the way bridge was out. By was the higher end, well, almost half a ton, and that maybe has been in operation before the Bureau uh, did that exercise for about 50 or so years. So you could imagine um, it was out by more than a half a ton in favor of the, of the farmers. So 
you could imagine that with the proper application of metrology, that would not have been, that would not have been. The types of metrology. Yeah, these are basically the three types of metrology, legal, industrial, and scientific metrology. Just to go speak about them briefly. Uh, the whole purpose or scope of legal metrology, uh, when we do our verification and inspection and pattern approval is to, is, is to ensure that um, the, the, the citizens get the, the, the value for money, more for, for consumer protection. Is a legal, there's a legal mandate that, for instance, all measuring instruments that are straight application should be verified uh, by, by the bill. For industrial metrology, it deals mostly with calibration and that's to ensure that the, the, the equipment um, function and, and work, work properly. Scientific metrology, of course, would involve more research and development and they would, that part of metrology supports both industrial and, and legal metrology. So again, if you look at the scope, verification and inspection, when we, when we do the scales in the supermarkets and other um, industry and the, the gas pumps, and we work also with, um, with the utilities, WASCO and select the whole purpose is to, to increase consumer, consumer confidence in the, in the products and services offered. By, by these um, businesses. As I mentioned earlier, for industrial metrology, the scope would be more for the calibration and testing of, of, of products. If I may talk briefly about the, the SLBS, uh, it was established by the Standards Act in 2000, uh, 1990. And some 10 years later, the Metrology Act came into existence. Um, and under the Metrology Act, the, the, the SLBS regulates uh, all, all measurement activities on the island. Again, for the purpose of ensuring fair trade, uh, advancement of industrial efficiency and development. Also very important is that the Act makes provision for the SIE units to be used as a legal system of measurement in itself. So what are the ongoing programs of the metrology department? And if I may um, repeat, is the programs of the metrology department, so not for the These are the programs, um, deal with the pattern approval of measuring instruments, um, the verification and calibration of measuring instruments, the verification of prepackaged goods. And when there is a, a dispute involving measurements, we, the Bureau um, would that investigation, independent body, and also um, involving the advancement of metrication on the island. And what is pattern approval? It's some it's a term that you probably hear sooner or later if you're not. It's basically a series of tests that um, model of a, of, a, of, a, of a measuring device will undergo too. To make sure that it is it is suited or suitable for for, for use, um, and at the end of the the tests, normally done by by a, by a lab an independent lab probably. At the end of the test, uh, a certificate of um, conformance or patent approval certificate will be given. We at the at the SLBS we would ask for proof of patent approval. And some of the these tests can be quite extensive. And I'll give you an example, um, pattern approval process of an electricity meter that's at the Metrology Lab in the Dominican Republic. Um, one of the tests that the meter would undergo is to expose the meter to varying ambient temperatures. Um, and at the end of each test, the meter again would be tested to make sure that um, well, to see, to, you know, to, to, to see that the, the meter um, is not affected in one way or another. Also, another test that would be done 
would be to subject the meter to rain-like conditions, okay, to, to see if it's both waterproof and watertight. Waterproof in the sense that um, the water does not affect the, the, the performance of the meter, and watertight in that case means that the water, in that case of the meter, water does not, what cannot enter the meter. And remember, after each test, the meter again will be tested to make sure that, um, that um, it performs as it, as it should. Okay, another test that's done is to expose the meter to varying external magnetic fields. Um, of course, you could see that in the picture on your, on your left. And another one that's done also is to ensure that the, the, there is no, that the meter, that the covering of the meter does not, is, is not conducted. There's no leak. Um, then there's a strength test that's done where the meter is subjected by a pendulum and some width at the bottom to varying um, imp well, levels of impact just to, to, to make sure that the meter is, well, is strong enough. And also there's a vibration test. Remember, after each of that, the meter is tested again. And that would process would probably take about, about four weeks to, to get one model of that, of that measuring device um, pattern of it. And then there's calibration, verification, and a term that is used sometimes, adjustment. Um, verification and calibration, simply put, is basically the same. Comparing your, your unknown with your, with, your, with your reference standard, in that case, that's known. The only thing with verification is that it's, 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 a, legal, it's a legal requirement. It has to satisfy requirements of the, of the regulation. So when we do the gas pumps and the scales, if it's within, um, we have to make sure that it's within a certain tolerance so that if it is, then we, we pass. And if it's not, if it, if it cannot be adjusted, it's, it's rejected. With calibration, there's no, um, the, the measuring instrument is not rejected. And of course, if there's no trade application, um, we cannot, might not be able to do a verification um, on the on the instrument. It can be adjusted to bring back to bring it back into, into performance, um, but there will be no rejection of the of the of the measuring device. Um, again, just to continue with what we do, give an exam give examples. This is um, we said that pictures speak up good, so um, if I may just talk briefly, um, again, that's at the supermarket. That was before COVID, so that's why we, we don't have masks. Uh, our scales are there, at the, at the supermarkets. Um, fuel dispensers, again, we do that um, working with the technicians from the from the from the various companies um, like that verification in construction of a way bridge um, if you know how the the way bridge operates um, it would be you know the the truck would come and the weight would be taken and then go into the uh, the to get filled with material, sun, ready mix, whatever it is, come back again, and the difference in the weight would be, would be what, the difference in weight would be um, what, what you are charged for. Of course, we will need to make sure that the wave bridge um, works properly. Um, also, in construction, some um, construction sites have wheel loaders where the, the, the there's a there's an onboard weighing system so um, as as the the, the, the backhoe the wheel loader will pick up the, the material then it would we would know the amount of material that that's present and of course we would have to make sure that um, that weighing system is 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 correct is functioning properly also we do the hopper scales where the mixing takes place. 
um, sum that's uh, of the uh, picture of uh, of uh, um, compression tester where um, the strength of concrete blocks are tested. Some projects may give the strength of, 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 of the concrete blocks, concrete blocks or molds have to be prepared and sent to different um, labs. There are a couple of them on the island to be, to, for the, to, to, to be tested. So we are the Bureau using our load cell, which you can see on the, on the, on the, on the left. We, we use the load cell to verify the compression test. Okay, that's a disposal site. Um, they glue some of um, the, the amount of, of material coming into the site will have to be monitored. So we have to verify the, the, the way bridge at that disposal, at that disposal site. Some companies need to monitor their waste. And we would go to verify the scale that is used to do that. And the airports, it's a question of, of, again, safety, but also you also charge for um, your luggage, whether if it's overweight, we would need to ensure that these scales weigh properly. We also do the verification of blood pressure meters. That program has been ongoing for a while. Um, also, again, another application of metrology, metrology in sports, we were involved in um, verifying the skills used to, to with the javelin and the short puts, and also at um, Showtime in Paradise some, some years ago, a boxing, a boxing, um, tournament, we had to verify the skills used with the athletes, because you know the athletes are, are classified. At the forensics lab, we, we had to, well, we, we would normally verify the, the skills and also do calibrations for them. Um, in that case, it's, we, we can provide traceability for the for the skills and for the for the measurement when it comes to weights, um, in case there is a, a dispute. Yeah, and of course, if you're curious, the, it was placed there just for the picture. The the, the, the item on this is on the scale is actually um, marijuana. Cannabis. Yeah. When we um, do our our uh, Verification, we, we uh, pass a rejected seeker depending. And also some weighing devices have, or measuring devices, sorry, have that, we have that um, capability to, to allow for sealing. So we, we, we place a seal on the, on the device um, and that's to prevent tampering that would probably change the, 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 the parameters of the scale after we have, after we have left. Um, there's also some devices may have an audit trail so we can, we can see if any changes was done to the, to the instruments when, when we, in, a, in a subsequent um, verification. Um, yeah, so that's the, again, a picture of um, verification on prepackaged goods. There's LPG, uh, the supermarkets, etc. We also take part in, in training. There was, that's just a, a, an example of some inspectors from the Trinidad Bureau of Standards that came to the other side. When there's a, 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 a dispute involving measurements, um, and a concern that you know the consumer is, get, is not getting value for money. Then we we, we, we would um, take part in that investigation. We also work with the utilities, the Lucilec and, and Wasco, again to ensure 
that um, there's consumer confidence in the services and products that these businesses will deliver. Uh, that's just an example of a prepackaged um, item. It says 40 grams and it's, uh, it's uh, as an exercise that was done at a, at, a, at a store. Again, based on a complaint from the, from the public, we went to a, some store. We read some samples of flour, rice, and sugar, and they all came up short. That has since been rectified. In the new capabilities, we, we want to, well, we have the capability now of offering temperature and also what, what are the benefits of metrology? Okay, so we, have, we can safely say that measurement is important for health, safety, and environment protection. Um, the proper application of metrology and quality control, um, they go hand in hand. And of course, metrology promotes fairness in, 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 in trade. Um, Again, the whole point is to again um, to increase the consumer confidence. And last but not least, metrology is important for for trade. I think that's the end of our presentation. Do you have any questions? Thank you. Question by the comment, Kevin. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, Richard, do you have any question? Yeah, I said another question by the comment. Can you hear me? Hello? Ah, okay. Yes, Kevin, can you hear me? Say anyone, any question? Hello? A comment. Can you hear me? Hello? I was saying, Kevin, uh, that was a good presentation. It's just unfortunate that we did not have a, a wider cross section of persons attending or following in this, this presentation. Some of the issues that were actually raised there are uh, everyday common issues that people refer to um, some of the mistakes that you pointed out, people make every day. With respect to, for example, even when you write uh, the units, like leaving a space between the, 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 the numeral and, 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 the, and the letter mm -hmm. or the symbol for, for the unit. All right, I figured... Uh, Sorry, say that again, Mr. Edmund. So could you say what? Hello? We, we missed your statement. Yes, I was making a comment early on. Can you hear me now? Yes. You can hear me? Yes, sir. All right, I was saying, I'm not sure how the, 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 the webinar, I should call it that, or seminar was, was advertised. I was saying it was also a very good presentation, right? Catching the essence of, of metrology. It's just unfortunate that we didn't have a wider cross-section of of participants from the public, from the governmental agencies and other institutions. I was also saying that some of the points raised in the presentation, for example, even a space between the, the numeral and the unit for measurement are mistakes people make every day. 
whether in, in, in writing, in, in books and whatever, like you see this all the time. And I thought that it would have been timely for people to attend such a, a, a presentation, right? Especially with, with the issue of uh, the COVID-19 and there would be need for new standards and changes in, in how we do business. I think it would be important. I'm certain sooner or later, the Bureau will be, will have an influx of persons coming or calling to respect to how to change things around. And that I think was an excellent opportunity for people to participate, all right? So it's unfortunate that we don't have wide participation, but it was a very good workshop. Thank you, thank you. Maybe we are, maybe we have to find some way to have you, that you are presented again to, to, to a wider grouping of persons.